welcome everyone in the room and on Zoom for the October 9th version of the Town of Rochester Select Board meeting. And this time, I checked too, that it is posted on the website, right? And in three public places and email to interested parties. So we can move forward with this meeting, contrary to our last attempted meeting where there was a failure for it to post to the website. And so in honor of um, upholding the open meeting laws, we canceled the last select board meeting and we'll pick up where we left off there. And the first item that was on the agenda for that meeting and is on the agenda for this meeting is the meeting minutes for the September 11th meeting which I read through and they look appropriate to me. I move to approve unless you have any changes. No, nope, I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> okay. And we have, um, is Larry Pleasant on, um, on Zoom or he is going to maybe show up in person to talk about emer emer emergency management. So we'll um, put him off for a little bit. And um, we had the August Treasurer's Report, which I went through. Thank you for putting that together. And we're um, about ready to move into our Budget and Finance Committee mm -hmm. season. So um, I guess we'll be taking a much closer look at these Treasurer Reports in those meetings. So I'd move to approve the August report. I second it. All in favor? Okay. Aye. Uh, all right. And we have, let's see, this guy's from <clears throat> the Capital Assets Policy. We're going to propose amending that um, policy software and movable equipment threshold amounts uh, to up to $10,000. And what was it? And this was recommended by Nathan. By Nathan, mm -hmm. the, the auditor, right? And what was the limit, the threshold for? Less than ten thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, um, well, we trust Nathan for a lot yes. of guidance and things, so I'd move to approve this recommendation. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. And um, number four on our agenda here, hey there, is um, there was a park use application for October eleventh for a library children's author as a guest on the park, but the word from the, um, the crew here in the office is that um, with the, considering the weather, they're going to withdraw this application and do it inside. So this is a, a moot point. So we'll um, check that one off of our, our list. And we'll move back on to Larry, who you're here okay. to um, talk about emergency management. And I understand you're um, in discussion with people on the shelter committee and such. You feel that it would be very helpful to have some some radio communication. Yes, we uh, we could have we were sorely missing radio communication during the near disaster. The near disaster. The near disaster. Oh, yes. that, that the disaster that did not happen. Yeah. <laughs> that, that that was kind of like a dress rehearsal. Yeah. At least for us it was. Yeah. So you want to tell us like, who you're thinking should have these and how many we're talking about? Um, sure. So so what we're looking for are um, are a five and a, and an extra five and a backup, making six total. Um, we'd like to um, be able to communicate uh, on two bands. Um, one is the emergency band, obviously, so we can be in touch in, in the event of emergency, but we don't want to chatter on that band. We have to talk about somebody's medicine or something. So we, we'd also like to get, um, I believe it's called the v, v -TAC, v -T -A -C or VTEC uh, uh, chip. I, um, I heard some people talking about it on a Zoom Zoom meeting, and they said that's exactly what that's made for. Is this this kind of thing? It's a, a bandwidth for emergency. Chip, I um, do you know about the VTAC? Yeah, there's yeah. VTAC. There's four of them. Yeah. One of them, VTAC four, is being only for barracks. Uh, we use VTAC one in fire scenes, mm -hmm. and we also use a uh, VTAC some for. Car accidents, car traffic. So, uh, so I would say if you're going to get anything, it'd be be tax three because I'm not interested in having any of them build the top to dock or anything else. Mm -hmm. So I um, 
So you guys have got in terms of the fire department, you've got some pretty high end um, radios. I understand. I was talking with uh, Steve, I believe it is, at Central Vermont Communications. That's where yeah, you they get run stuff through. Yeah, they run about a thousand bucks. And a thousand bucks. He was recommending to me that there is a uh, cheap one, um, a cheaper <coughs> one, the Kenwood NX 1200 AVK that run about $300 which would probably do the job, he says, that's what they sell to a lot of smaller departments and, and emergency groups and stuff. So when it's on... The only thing I'll say is you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. Yeah. The thing is, is they're going to have five radios. They aren't going to know where three of them are. And out of those three, they're all going to be dead. I mean, I've been in the fire department for 50 years. Yeah. And we've used them once. And we have plenty of radios to give to the ones that need it. The ones that have radios that want them shouldn't have them. How many radios do you have now, Terry? Enough. I mean, I think we got 12. 12? 13. So when you have a fire call, what's your usual, usual usage? Do you have guys on with traffic if there's traffic control do you they're radioed and who else do you have and all the emergency? officers have them and all the officers and Kristen and how many do you usually have a spare then oh we have two or three spares you have two or three spares? and we could get some up for it if we needed like Irene yeah. Yeah. I had plenty of radios to give to the ones that needed it okay that's that's the big question. The problem I have with having more radios is I cleaned out the cellar when I started on this board and every single radio that was down there was obsolete and not worth a cent and nobody wanted them. And so my feeling is if we have too many of these things, they're not going to they're just not going to be useful. If we have enough in the fire department and in emergency situations, we distribute them to the people that need them. I think that's the better way to go where we can keep track of just a few because in all the emergency situations that I've been in in my life, and there's been quite a few with the power situations that I've seen, <clears throat> the more people you have on a radio, the worse it is. Mm -hmm. um, you need certain few people to be in charge and you need Indians. And that's really the basic thing. Now, I think in your position as emergency management, you probably in a situation that requires like Irene or something, you would have a radio because he would see that you had a radio. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the way we should work that stuff. I, it I should honestly, be only the heads. Right, exactly. And we start and handing totally them out to every radio. person there. That's a joke. Right. right. It, I'm with you 100%. Because... As far as to go look for people, you aren't going to do it. We're going to do it. So, right. so we're going to have a, uh, a base of operations, right? A command center will be set up probably here. here. Yeah. Probably right here. And someone's going to have to be staffing that. Yeah. Well, there's a radio right so, over there. Yeah. So we need to be in, in communication. So I need to be in communication. There may be somebody else on the road. Like if we're going house to house again, it'd be good to stay in communication as best we can. Well, you find house to house, you're going to find the fire department's going to do it for really? safety reason. So we're going to have people have radios. Okay, so is it possible, one second, so my question is, is it possible that we could get a second chip installed in an existing uh, set of radios, or some, some number to be determined, maybe three perhaps? I don't, I'm not a... If we could take no, those... So. Have the people stick another chip in it, charge us for whatever that is, a few hundred bucks. That would be perfect, right? As far as getting another chip, you're talking, you're really going to have to get a radio frame, so you're going to be a year getting that. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. So what is the... What? I mean, the only thing... Which is something they're welcome to look into. I just don't right. think that it's an easy process I mean, to get. Right. So, so what would be a recommendation from you? Because you're well, we gave them radio, they'd be some stipulations on it because I don't care if you are. We don't want you chatting all the time on the radio. Right. And I don't think it's that's emergency frequency that's only and you know what? Here. The state police will shut us off because they aren't gonna put up with somebody talking on it. Right. So it's gonna have to be a, I gave a lesson when I handed it out. During Irene. During Irene and the people had them. 
knew how to use them, and we didn't have any problems. Right. <clears throat> and another thing about radios, too, is they need to be exercised frequently. Like, you can't just... Can't leave them on the charger, they'll be dead. Or you get maybe an hour of them. And after, you know, they aren't cheap to maintain. I don't care if you buy the cheap ones, they're still going to go through batteries. Yeah. So I, I guess your Larry's thought on this is that a, to having a radio, so he wakes up in the middle of the night and then the roads are washed out and it's not going to be, your first priority is not going to be to drive to his house to give him a radio. But if you had something, then he no, could but he know needs, what's going on. He going needs on. to come to the command center, and then he'll have a radio. We have one because he's not going to do any good at home. Yeah. Pat, you have a comment? When we have an emergency, in my training with both the ambulance and I took a fire department training, there's an incident commander. Correct. One person that runs the show. You got it. Is there is there a circumstance where the shelter team would not fall under that? They would fall underneath the incident commander. And and it would not be the whole crew. It'd be one person down there in charge. Right. So that incident commander, depending on what the problem is, would either be chief or first person on. Chief would not be it probably. Or or Larry. It'd be one of only two people. It would be people. him, but yeah, there again, he, I don't know whether he's taking the classes or not. Yes, I'm taking classes. But he should. Mm -hmm. So the incident commander would be the one to be the point person. If the fire department had a couple extra radios... They, they would be only the point person for what's going on. We had the, a trouble up here during Irene that should have been taken care of that we got in trouble when it come down to... But if the shelter Being, team is... Before he makes a call, he needs to talk to the people, the other people on there. If the him. shelter team is being activated, um, the select board knows about it. Mm -hmm. Right, but and they only need one radio down there. the fire department will also know about mm -hmm. it. So at that point in time, we typically have a meeting to determine whether to open the shelter or not. So at that point, if there were a couple extra radios housed at the fire department, it would be easy for them to access the fire department and then you could have your two or three or five radios, whatever you needed. Mm -hmm. Chances this, are we're going to be already called. With, yeah, chances are before you, guys you would even, already be involved. Before you that's even know what's going on, we're going to be called. They're going to be busy. You're going to be busy. You're in charge of the scene. so I'm in charge of safety of everything. And the, you're also the safety or whoever the fire department is. That's right. That's right. So I'm, I'm here in a, in a support position to handle media, to handle questions from our right. citizens, just so that somebody's the point. Mm -hmm. I'm not but here to interfere tell the people, with your job. And I mean, <clears throat> if there was a need for radios, you could grab them from the fire department, where they're Correct. already Correct. monitoring and charging oh, yeah. and exercising them. Just like we did down around the yeah. They'd be yeah. under the does, jurisdiction does work? of you. Right. Would who, that work? Who would get one? It would work. It would be under the jurisdiction of the fire chief. Right. But the, the fire department would be aware that if the shelter team was but opening the shelter, you don't that they would lend a couple out. No, because you got the right. radio already right. anyway. Yeah. Um, but he would need one to go it, rogue right, or to, whatever but you want to call it. If you're an instant commander, you don't leave the command post. Right. You do not leave. Right. Other so, than so the see people. I mean, Michaela or myself or somebody else who's Right. In line would would be would be manning or humaning the uh, the command post at all times. Correct. Exactly. Right. Bring right. the sleeping bag. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, I just just to add, I, this may be a benefit or maybe a waste of time to even mention it, but I, I live off grid and I have um, enhanced my battery system, my solar cells. I have a satellite communication and I have a, a cell phone repeater, so I'm in pretty I'm, I'm pretty good shape. If, if things go out, I could still get it. I can still I could still be I would still be able to call out. Let's put it that way. So if everything's if good everything's enough. down, good. as long as the satellites are still working, we can, mm -hmm. we can get out. Okay. I can go to your house. You can come to my house. We have hot showers. Yeah, All the right. <laughs> So, and the long or the short of it is then the radios that would be accessible from the fire station would be the higher quality radio anyway. As getting right, back and they to would be showed how to use them because 
we like I said, you're not going to yeah. be on them all so the time. So we'd have to have a training with a couple of people. It may be um, exercise. So you probably you rotate rotate them around. So be easier they, to, yeah. to do the training in the day you hand them out because if you do it now, they aren't going to know right. you can't what to use. But you might be a busy man. You might be some elsewhere. Not, and whoever's there may not know that we have the, permission to take them. The you aren't going to take them. I'll have the, an officer bring it to yeah, you. Yeah, we'll have Kristen. an officer get them to you and then and we'll also how to notify the department the, so everybody's on There'll the be a page. distribution yep. system set up for that. Yep. I mean, that'll be Perfect. their command and they'll be able to... We're good you. about getting people yeah. around and I got people on both sides of the river so it really is. Right. Right. right, because they will be aware of people that will that may need assistance that you may need to know. Yep. We you have to those. go get somebody somewhere. Yep. Okay. I'm so glad we clarified that. Thank yep. you, Sherry. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We've had Excellent. a wonderful meeting. It's just yeah. a, thank you, Brian. We say it's the town 1800 to yeah. whatever. But it's yeah. good that we're talking about it now and not in the middle of an event. Thank you for bringing it up. Because yeah. I, I do think that the process we have with a group of radios controlled by a group and they can distribute from there because the waste I saw down here mm -hmm. to dispose of that stuff was just heartbreaking really I said holy cow all this money just yeah and ours are on like a rotation of being maintained right. and going to to the exactly. doctors and coming back with new parts. Exactly. And, you yeah. can rely on your yeah, we don't buy the Which is expensive. cheap ones yeah, anymore. And expensive. you don't have cheap ones or we anything tried it. else. No, it doesn't pan out and they don't reach out. Yeah. Yeah. So it really doesn't. All right. All right. Well, thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Best possible okay. scenario. <laughs> Jerry, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. All right. We aim to please. Right. So, okay. I'm off to my next appointment. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have another park use application, and that one is for August, uh, October 20th at 4.30 to 7, the Rochester PTO Giant Pumpkin Way, and that probably won't get um, hampered by um, inclement weather. <laughs> yeah. So I'd, I'd move to approve that. I second it. All in favor? No. Aye. 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 Talk that. We had um, a request to talk about our friend the owl here and, and what it is and um, what did it cost and who initiated the purchase. I guess that is, um, it seems to be working um, all right now. I think there was a bad cable connection or something, but I think it's pretty obvious what the owl is doing is allowing Zoom to seamlessly interact with the meeting visually and audibly. And um, they, we paid $1,000 for it, and I believe we used ARPA funding for that. Yes, we that did. Was, um, and that happened. That was our first purchase. <laughs> the first purchase was ARPA money, yeah. right, um, right when we resumed in-person meetings in 2020. So it's... Um, it's basically, it's just a tool to facilitate uh, open meetings of people that can't or don't want to be here in person. So, I think that's... Uh, so, uh, June, June, I have a question. Um, okay, hold on just one second, Robert. You have your computer and your phone on again, so you need to choose one or the other because it's causing the echo. While you're doing that, Martha had her hand up, so we'll let her go. Um, I just, just wondered if OWL was an acronym for something. Does it stand for something? No. I think it just looks no, like, it looks like <laughs> so, so, Robert, if you could hold your... You, need you, you, Robert, you, 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 yeah. Um, so, I just um, muted... Yeah. I just muted his phone, All right, and his computer's also muted, so he's... Um, you'll need to... Unmute your computer. But, uh, well, Robert, we're going to save your question for the public comment period so we can move through the agenda and just take notes and remember what you wanted to say. But um, we'll just, and, and please only sign in either on your computer or the phone because, as you heard, you can um, cause a disruption there. Um, um, 
Could I ask my question now? I'm, I'm yeah, sorry. Your question was, is there a, um, is it an acronym for something? OWL, what, does it stand for something? I just wondered. No. I, I've never heard of it before. It doesn't stand for anything. It's just it, what the term was called. Yeah, it's just, a, well, it's, you know, kind of, they think that owls are, can look every direction, and this has like a 360 degree view. It, it, it responds to whoever is speaking and focuses the camera okay. in that direction. So, I so guess if I just if I described it in my article as a tool that allows Zoom to facilitate open meetings, would that be that's correct? Or? Yeah. Everybody knows. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. I would like to. I would like to. Very yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So Robert, we'll leave that to your to the public comments so we can get through the agenda. Um, because it's. I don't think that's proper. The, no, that's, uh, that's the, the subject saying. with regard to the owl is public. Um, Robert, I'm going to let you wait till the um, public comment session to talk about this. All right. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Do do. I'm sorry. The con the concern about the owl is on the agenda, and I have every right to speak about it. Tell me no, what to do. Uh, in the public comment, you do. So please. No. Him in the public comment. Okay. I've yeah. muted him. So you can come back in the public comment and talk about this. You're you're welcome to witness the meetings, but you're not here to direct the meetings. So. And we answered the question. That and was we on answered the, the question that's on there. Yeah. So um, <laughs> the next item on the agenda so is to uh, and turn this off. I want to make this clear yeah, to this can, whole yeah, select can, board. Can, 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 take him out. Take him out. No. And that was not him. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have, um, where were we? Number nine is formally approving the NIMREC as the firm to do the townwide appraisal. So I understand Julie approached several, several entities. 17. Um, 17. Yeah. And the, some of um, which are no longer in business. <laughs> some of them are no longer in business. Nemrick is um, pretty darn familiar with our information. It was the best price, so I think that's it's kind of a no-brainer to award that um, to Nemrick. Yeah, and I Louis, Louis also, highly recommend it. And, Louis and Louis other towns yeah. are using the same service. Yeah, so I, uh, I propose we do that. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. Nancy? Do we have any idea when the... 2026? 2025. 2025. Mm -hmm. 2025. That's when I think that's what start. your contract said in there. That's when they're going to start. Uh, the proposal, sorry. Yeah. It's going to start. But it'll yeah. Right. And it takes a and year to complete. To, a, year, a year to complete. We to pull it together. Grievances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And our last one was, what, 2012? 2011, 2012. So, um, yeah, it's happening. Yeah. You so, um, um, Martha, you have a question? Yeah, um, I, I'm sorry. On the agenda, it looks like we skipped over the access, mobility, elevator, uh, lift, three-year contract. That, Martha. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Pardon me. So the, um, the access, mob mobility, elevator, lift is a three-year contract for the maintenance of that. And um, I'd move to approve. We have no choice. We have no choice, yeah. All in favor? A second. All in Aye. favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Agreed to date. This is 10. I don't know how many elevator lift co companies there are out there. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I just noticed that. And then we have a management representation letter for Pace and Holly, which is our um, auditors. Auditors, right? They did the yep. draft of the audit for finishing fiscal year 24. Yep. Three. Three. 23. Three. It's all good. So we're, <laughs> we're, lucky, we're lucky to have them. Yeah. 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 So I'd move to, um, move to sign that letter. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, this is actually, you have to sign it, and I will sign this in. Who, me? Mm -hmm. It says treasurer. Oh, nice. They're great people to work with. Thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm. There you go. 
I'll help you do that real quick just to get it done. Alright. No, you can. So Tony, welcome. Any um, exciting news from the library other than it's slowly getting painted? Getting painted, yeah. Slowly. Quite, quite pleased with that. Yeah. Uh, you probably will, I don't know, will you have any contact with uh, some of the uh, historical people and so on about the painting and the, what just, it should be? We're just doing the upper piece yeah. and the front. Yeah. That's okay. all. We're okay. not touching the lower section at this time because I think we've got to do something different there. Yeah. I'm not sure what, but right. that's a whole different ball game. Yeah. So we're just getting the upper painted. Okay. In, in the front. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. And um, I was going to, oh, we're having a trustees meeting tomorrow afternoon at 530, I believe. And our library director is here and will probably say a few things that are beyond what I would say. <laughs> 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 All right. I just wanted to introduce myself as the new library director. I'm Maya Nuru, if you don't know. Um, and I would like to say that I am so thrilled to have this job. It's an amazing library. Jeanette has done such an incredible job with it. So I am looking forward to many years of building the collection and creating more programs and finding ways to keep the library relevant for everyone in the community. I invite you wholeheartedly to come and check us out at any point. And if you want to hear a Vermont farmer talk about his cute little animals and the cute little books he writes about them, he'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Maya. Awesome. Thank you, Maya. Thanks for taking it on. I'm glad you're excited about it. Yeah. 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 I am. Thank you. All right. Um, any, um, I see they've been stockpiling sand and yeah. dealing with broken trucks. Yeah, they're still dealing with broken trucks. And they did the final inspection on the bridge, which that's good. And everything's good there. Uh, there's, they got a lot of truck issues right now. The, the new truck and the drive shaft fell off yeah, there one smashed day. Smashed the radiator. Smashed the radiator, so we're going to have to a new radiator and that, and then the other truck has to go back in. That's under warranty, though, isn't it? No, because the drive shaft fell off. That's not a warrantied system. So we'll have to spray the shaft going to the pump. Oh, wow. It's a whole different drive shaft's <laughs> far away from the radiator. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the drive shaft to the pump, sorry. Yeah, to the pump. Um, and he is hauling sand. He's, you know, he put a bunch of barriers up because we had to build and paint it there. And, mm -hmm. and he uh, kind of stacked some blocks up around it, which I think was, yeah. he said he'd been wanting to do that for a long time. Yeah. So that was good that we were able to get that done. So and that's all he's yeah. pretty much doing, getting ready for winter, I guess. That's about it. Winter's coming. Yep, it is. Um, Terry, have you got any? Oh, Martha, has nope. Martha, you got a question there? I'm sorry, a question for Frank, because you're base, you're the board's liaison with the road crew, right? Yeah. Um, I just, I always call them at uh, at some point um, within a week or two before Halloween, and to just remind them they are the ones who always br take the um, um, bunk benches and the picnic tables off the park and store them for yep. the winter. That was yep. just it's getting to be that time yeah so if, so if, if you think of it the next time you see them yeah i'll, I'll mention it to them martha thank you okay thank you very much i appreciate it i'm the part i am the park committee and that's why i'm bothering you about it thank yep, you no problem all right terry what's new in the utility world well i talked to julie about the checkbook has got quite a bit of money in it and it's something you guys need to take out and put into the the reserve funds. There's like ninety two thousand in it. 
and you haven't done it in the last couple of years, it should be getting done every year to see where we stand and so we can do some maintenance that should be done. Yeah. And I wrote it in my report that <clears throat> next year I'd like, I got a couple of manholes that need to get replaced. Uh, we got two sewer pumps that's going to have to get replaced. Uh, and then water, I think we should try doing a couple of hydrants each year because we're way behind. Uh, you know, a lot of them are 40, 50 years old. They're starting to work really hard mm -hmm. and doesn't seem a good way to free them up. But, you know, years ago you had me make up this, you know, what we should be doing and we haven't done any of that. Mainly because we haven't had any money until we raised the rate since yeah. last time. And by so the looks, we're doing pretty good on it. So, yeah, so this, we need to start doing some of this maintenance or else somebody's going to get kicked in the ass so and the, ask um, for it bad. So and um, you want to just pick some of those things off a list and start? I did write them? it down on my yeah. sheet yeah. when you read it. that For budget finance. For budget, for budget finance. finance. All right, that'll be good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just put down rough numbers. I have no idea what yeah. it's going to cost. I mean, yeah. But you, when we have our meeting, then you can come in and talk about those. What do you right. uh, What do you recommend we stuff in the reserve? Well, well I think we, you should stuff you, all you can. I, we have to look at a couple things before yeah. we do that. Yeah. There's some things that are still not quite. Even though the rates have come up, I was looking at the draft audit, and we're still at like negative twenty. In the books. So, really? Yeah. Then show it in the it's books. getting better because it was at negative 80. So we're doing mm. a lot better than we were. So we're just not quite 100% out of it. So I just I just want to go over all that first before we like say we're going to throw how much into it. Right. And I don't really think it's that we can just say, okay, we're going to take 30 and put it here and 50 and put it there. Like I think we have to. You got to separate the water through, from the sewer. Which we can. Right. People. But that's yes. what I. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, we just need so time you'll to come up with that. a number that we can adjust. Yeah, and I think we need to, to talk to Nathan a little bit too to make sure that, that we fully understand this. Of but how much you doing. need to leave and where right. it needs to go. Yeah. If right. we do it each year, you're gonna know what you can afford to do. Yeah, next year. Yeah. That's a number that yeah. we have to run through the auditors though before we can. Right. Say so what typically, we can what would do. happen would be, you know, like I foresee it being. Right. At the end of the audit, when we get like our final audit, then we would know what our books ended, you know, the prior year, mm -hmm. and then we would be like, okay, now beginning this year, we can go ahead and transfer twenty thousand to the water and fifty right. to the sewer, or whatever the case may be. So you be. almost have to do it a year after. You we need to wait year. until our audit's been finalized. Right. Yeah. yeah, this year. To That's know what I said. Number. Right. Yep. You need to look into it this year because sewer pump's going to get done this next year, whether you got money or not. Yeah, yeah. and we'll I'll. We'll connect with Nathan about because that. Because it's putting us weight. I'm figuring I'm down 20% on on what it's costing us and what we're getting hit for. They're 20% less than what they should be. So it's time to change them. What are the pumps downstairs? Those are the ones that are going to go in. We've already paid for them. Those. Mm -hmm. You haven't paid to get them in there. Mm -hmm. What's because the other one's got to be all taken. they got to take bottoms a half to make them fit in the what's there. So what's more expensive, buying the pump or putting it in? Mm -hmm. Well, on the conduit, right, I think I'm going to have to run the conduit over and up to the box because it's not. There's a junction box inside and it's no way we're going to do that bull again. Yeah. So you foresee putting it in being more expensive than buying the pump itself? No, probably not as much. But not as much, but... A chunk, yeah. It the, might be it might be a little expensive this time because he's got to do some the, electrical. We got to do a little digging configuration, yeah. and, and I have to have somebody come court and put a boot in so it doesn't leak. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna call him this fall and see if I can get him to come down so I'll have a good number. Yeah. In the spring, I think by getting it ready now. I get a better price that they won't be so busy in the spring that we could do yeah, it. Yeah, it'd be good to get that number sooner than later for the budget session so we can... I gave a rough yeah, number. Rough number, okay. That would be probably, I think, yeah. pretty close. Cool. Uh, 
But yeah, we gotta start doing some of this stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I letting it go totally too far. Agree. Yep. Totally agree. Because it's gonna cost big bucks eventually. <clears throat> yep. Okay. And then we need to get the mowing done down to school. That wheat field's grass is this high. I'll talk to John. He needs he's to double mow it too, tell him, because it's fall. I know he's getting married this weekend, I think, isn't he? Yeah, but he's got a couple guys leaving that work for him mowing. Right. Yeah. Well, it's getting to hay in down there now. Yeah, it's terrible. But that's. The, I mean, next year you got to really think yeah. about getting this done. It's got to be done oh, weekly yeah, on that field if you're going to keep it alive. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll text him, get a hold of him. All right. Is um, Jeff Gephardt in the, in the Zoom? Yep, he is. Hey, welcome, Jeff. I'm here. Yep. I'm here, thank you. Yep. Um, not a whole lot to report, but uh, Harry Falconer has helped us uh, to put in uh, application for the municipal, uh, the Merck program, Municipal Energy Resilience Assessment. Um, we have put in an application there for a level two um, uh, energy audit. And a level two energy audit is, uh, a level one is a walkthrough. We've had all of those that we need. Uh, level two is an actual diagnostic analysis of the building and, and uh, recommendations for improvements. Harry and I, in discussing it, uh, felt that the office was the best uh, primary target for us um, with uh, almost uh, $5,900 annually in uh, fuel and electricity, um, followed by the town garage. Yeah. And so and they, that, that's that, been. That generally, you can pretty much count on getting your first choice and possibly the second choice. Um, that's, that's what, uh, I've been led to believe. Yep. I know there are 22 towns that already have gotten grants, uh, through this program and that the second round, uh, closes at the end of the month. Yeah. So, and I'm, I, I probably need to apologize to all of you guys for burying you with the uh, fuel data and graphs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you presented it well actually it made it a little easier to kind of see what was going on with it so i no, appreciated that not that, that that not like some of the things we could see <laughs> not our first spreadsheet yeah well that's um that's a good step forward i know it's taken a lot of little steps to get there but thank you for being persistent no problem yeah yep. um Kristen, you got any grant updates? I've just got two little things. Um, we've received our reimbursement for our grant aid on um, Cooper Run and North Hollow, so we received the full $27,000 reimbursement. Mm -hmm. And um, for FEMA, we've, we're still working on things. Um, we've currently got three projects. We have a Jones Mountain, and then we have a debris. Which they allowed us to combine all of our debris locations into one and then a project on North Hollow. Um, so I've been spending hours in the portal answering questions and providing documents. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where we are with that. Yeah. All right. Is North Hollow by uh, the farm? Yes. Yeah, by Mike Mullins there, right at that intersection. They found fish there. Yeah, I saw that. So uh, the whole, now you know, it's a whole new ball game. Yeah. yeah. So that two foot culvert's going to turn into something else and we're not sure exactly what it is yet because they'll have to do the other one below it too so we'll have to wait and see on that be fishing for money <laughs> they actually were they look like they're yeah, frying they're pans nice little photos <laughs> <laughs> they were, yeah, they were good 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 some breakfast they were fish. Fish. yeah <laughs> On well, both ends of that culvert. That was cool. surprising, really. I was surprised. All right. So now we move into the public comment section of the meeting, in which we um, hold at three minutes. So, Robert, now is your chance. If you had something that you wanted to say, um, this is your your time to do it. 
If you're still there. Yeah, he is still here. His phone's muted, but his computer, if you just want to unmute your computer, Robert. Or maybe he doesn't have anything. Does anybody have anything? Be You've surprised. got a couple of different, couple of of different new people folks like tonight on yeah. here. Anybody that um, out there that wants to talk about anything else, and we'll um, we'll um, now it's your chance and going once, going twice, and thank you all for coming. I move to adjourn. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay.